This installment of the Look Back series is a collection of snapshots and tidbits about ordinary life at the dawn of the 20th century, when St. Louis finally reached fourth place in the list of the nation's largest cities. It had 575,000 people. It would hold fourth place in 1910, and then its position would start slowly and steadily descending. Back then, the city had about 70% of the population of what we now consider the metro area. And nowadays, of course, the city is about a tenth. And the migration to the suburbs over the last 60 years account for that. In 1900, you could buy a men's suit on sale for $10. You could add a skimmer hat for another buck. You could get a, summer, a lady's summer dress for $3. However, you might make $2 a day working at a quarry, or if you were an in-house maid, perhaps $20 a month. St. Louis had perhaps 2,000 cars in the early days of the 1900s. Many of them were home-built. A number of them were steamers. The first plant that produced cars in St. Louis, St. Louis Motor Carriage on North Van de Venter opened in 1898. There were plenty of things to, for people to do back then. The city had 41 singing societies. The Grand Army of the Republic, which was the primary veterans association of the Union soldiers from the Civil War, had nine lodges. There were as many meeting places for the Order of the Eastern Star. People were very busy meeting each other. Also, they could go to about one of about 40 hospitals and at the end of their days, we had 74 undertakers, some of them names you, we still remember, Hoffmeister, Bope, Kriegshauser. I end the piece with a few short items, standard news articles from August 1902. One was the obituary of Mary Renoir, 90 years old, from Cahokia, who Said, had said she remembered seeing the first steamboat that arrived in 1817. We also make a brief reference to a boxing match between young, two young, well-bred gentlemen who were fighting over the favors of a young lady. The Post-Dispatch ran a long article with a drawing of this honor match, never named the lady, and never followed up on whether either man got his wish.